This is one that I think will uh, be pretty interesting for a lot of you who have kind of um, been a part or, or at least listened in on the bilateral versus unilateral debate. Um, one of the things that I've noticed in, with deadlifts is that the bilateral deficit is actually smaller for deadlifting than squatting. So, you know, first thing, what's the bilateral deficit? If you take your one limb and you, you calculate unilateral strength and you combine it with the other limb's unilateral strength, generally speaking, you're going to find out uh, that you know the strength is greater than limbs A and B working together on a bilateral exercise. So I know one of the examples that's been out there. Um, you know if you're if you're proficient with both, look at your five rep max uh, back squat and then look at your five rep max Bulgarian split squat with a barbell on each side. Um, and then you know add up your your two legs on that that Bulgarian split squat and, and conceivably it should be higher. So if you have an athlete who can do 225 for five on each side uh, of that Bulgarian split squat, chances are he's he's better than a a 450 back squatter. I think it's a, a pretty safe bet. Um, and obviously that's not a, a perfect calculation because some of the weight is going to be, um, you know, bared on that back foot during a Bulgarian split squat. But as a general thumb, you generally will be stronger um, when you combine those two. And, and that constitutes the bilateral deficit. So it's a, it's a big, big deal if, you know, you're in, in professional sports or any level of sports really that you're strong in single leg stance. So I think you can make the argument that, you know, you want somewhat of a greater bilateral deficit because it will have greater carryover. Um, you know, that said, you know, you, you do know that, you know, there are exercises that we use that are unilateral with respect to deadlifting too. Um, so obviously we watch this one, we get a, you know, posterior weight shift, single leg stance, one leg RDL. And obviously I'm not using great weight right here. I'm just demonstrating in this one, but, um, you know, we have a, a ton of eccentric control, um, of that femur in multiple planes really, um, as we kind of dive down to that bottom position. But I think one thing to appreciate is that Deadlifts are even easier to measure than, than squat variations with respect to the bilateral deficit because we are in true unilateral stance. Um, and you know the argument has always been you know that hey in addition to maybe having more functional carryover uh, we limit the amount of loading we need for a training effect so there's not as much stress on the spine all that so um, this is an even easier way to measure it because you know we don't throw any weight on that back leg we just basically go down and come back up with a one leg RDL. Um, now, what's interesting is I've never really seen an athlete who could do a single leg RDL um, that would approach their best bilateral deadlift from the floor when you took that right and left leg, you know, combined. You know, take for example an athlete who can hold 100 pounds in each hand on this exercise and, and do it for, you know, a set of five on each side. Um, I can pretty much guarantee you that they can deadlift over 400 pounds very, very easily um, on both sides with, with you know, uh, when you when you actually take into account what they would do bilaterally, so you know this is literally the the best one I've ever seen in terms of unilateral exercise. I mean, this is two fifty five for six. Um, you know, it kind of blew everybody in the gym away when he threw this on and went out and did it like it was nothing. But there are a couple things I want you to appreciate on this one. First off, this is an athlete who is a six hundred pound deadlifter. He's an unbelievable deadlifter. He's got a great build for it with his long arms. Um, You'll notice with this one as well, he's actually getting, uh, you know, he's getting some help from the stretch shortening cycle. When you do your first rep on a set of deadlifts, you're pulling from a dead stop. Okay, as he's going through this one, he's actually using some of the elastic energy that's built on the way back, on the way down to the bottom of this. So with a single leg RDL, um, you don't. Yeah, you don't have the benefits necessarily that you would of like a Bulgarian split squat with the back foot being supported to kind of inflate the numbers, but you certainly still have the benefits of the stretch shortening cycle on all five exercise, uh, all five reps of the exercise. Whereas with a conventional deadlift, on that first rep, you're pulling from a dead stop, and really you should be pulling from a dead stop on every rep in your deadlift set. So we're kind of comparing apples and oranges, and we're, we're giving this single leg approach the benefit of the doubt with respect to being stronger, and it's still coming out as less. Um, I think the other thing to appreciate uh, with this exercise is there is a much more awkward setup position. Whereas with a, a Bulgarian split squat with a bar on your back, you can unrack it, walk the bar out, set yourself up. With a single leg RDL, you've got to you got to stand it up with bilateral, and you basically got to walk backwards um, to kind of be successful with this, or you have to deadlift it from the floor and then go to town. Um, so it's a much tougher setup to kind of go into what you want to do. Um, so I'd say that the bilateral deficit is smaller for deadlifting than squatting, and that includes just about any deadlift variation um, that's, that's done from a dead stop. So there's all the more reason for it to not be the case, but it is. Um, you get the benefit of the stretch shorting cycle with, with squatting, one leg RDL, SLDL, and Bulgarian split squats. You don't get that on a bilateral deadlift. So I think you have to ask, is, is bilateral better? And I'd say for strength and power development, absolutely. I, I think athletes absolutely do need bilateral, um, you know, posterior chain exercises, deadlift variations, obviously Olympic lifts, things along those lines. Um, 
Nick Howard, we still need that one leg posterior chain work. Um, just probably not as much as we need it in more quad dominant variations. And I see this much more as an accessory movement. So maybe like a C1 in, in a training program that we would do a little bit later after we've done our pure strength work. But I do think it's very, very important to appreciate that doing one leg RDLs is never from a strength standpoint going to take the place of, of good bilateral exercise that, that allows us to load. Um, we are missing out on a lot of the force and power production benefits that we would otherwise get.